I'm delighted to be here. It's really good to be uh, in this building because I've heard so much about this and the tick uh, over the last couple of years, and it's clearly uh, absolutely vital to the, a lot of the aspirations of Scotland in terms of uh, long-term growth, and it's good to see Linknode as the fastest mover. I have to, it, it, given, given what uh, Ian was saying, I think one thing I have to say is I was very struck about how it changes people. I was very struck when I was talking to my daughter, who is virtually unshockable, when I said to her that my Volvo, I've had my Volvo since before the internet was invented, she was absolutely staggered. Not so much about the car, because she wants me to get rid of the car, but the idea of living in a pre-internet age. And when you add on all the other things over the last 10, 15 years, you've just got just such an enormous change in the way that we all live our lives and operate. Um, what I was going to do today uh, really was to talk a bit about the Scottish Government's digital strategy and then to try and relate that specifically to the area of planning. Um, and I've been doing a number of events, as it were, with particular sector groups like uh, I've done some with, on smart metering uh, and with the global, uh, with geographic information groups, really just to get an understanding of how it feels from particular parts of the world. But I will now do the thing which Ian said I was going to do, which is introduce myself, having, uh, having uh, gone through all that. Um, I'm digital director in Scottish Government. It's a role that was uh, established about 18 months ago, really in recognition that digital changes everything, and that if we in Scottish Government are to play our role effectively, we have to pull together the strands from a range of different areas. And so um, in a world in which, like you guys, you know, we're trying to get 25% you know, reductions in senior staffing over three or four years, where program budgets are getting smaller, uh, nonetheless, we've seen this as a priority and an area for growth in commitment in Scottish Government because of its vital importance. Um, the, uh, in a sense, the way of the, the place I would start and, um, is here, really. The, the Scottish Government's digital strategy is to become a world-leading digital nation by 2020 and to ensure Scotland's well positioned to take full advantage of all the opportunities of the digital age. I think that word opportunity keeps coming back in so many different areas. It may be spend to save, but it's, it's very much opportunities. And the four areas that we have seen as being absolutely vital to um, success in the digital age are those four. And there's an odd one out, which is digital connectivity, because all of the other three are outcomes, whereas digital connectivity is what underpins everything else. It's completely useless on its own, but it's absolutely essential to achieve anything else. Uh, and clearly, the Scottish Government is putting uh, a lot of money into a 300 million, a couple of projects for 300 million pounds across uh, Scotland to bring high-speed broadband to the more remote areas. And there are clearly challenges still in, in, um, in urban areas too, which I know the, the city council here is um, investing in free Wi-Fi. Again, because without that connectivity, a city isn't as competitive as it needs to be. So you've got connectivity sitting there. And I think there's some planning issues to do with connectivity, which I might come back to. We then have digital participation, where... Um, Again, if you look at the opportunities of, uh, of the digital age, if you've got 20% of people who more or less map to the 20% most disadvantaged across uh, Scotland, not, uh, not involved, not having access, not using digital, then it's another layer of disadvantage which needs to be addressed. And also, I think from a planning perspective, if you want to use modern approaches, if you don't have people connected, then you're always going to have um, an additional group you're really needing to get to. And the smaller that group is, I suspect, the easier your lives will be. 
the digital economy, um, we're, uh, I mean, Ian was already talking a bit about the way in which businesses change. Businesses die because, of, because they haven't changed their business model. And likewise, you know, a lot of the really big growth businesses are developing new models based on digital technology. And in Scotland, we have many advantages in terms of uh, skills, expertise, capacity to do what's going to be done here, which I think is to link different capabilities in order to build something fundamentally new. And I think the whole digital economy area is really about precisely that. Uh, how, what can government do to support um, those areas of excellence to thrive and export? And what can we do in terms of business support to help those companies who aren't using the internet effectively to do so and to get better at it? And again, I think there is an issue here for planning because one of the, one of the broad issues for the public sector, I think, is um, the way in which we choose to procure services or define our requirements can help companies to innovate. And if they innovate and do services in new ways, then you've got a they've got a chance of growing, exporting, supporting the economy. And I do think that's quite a serious issue as we, as we talk about the opportunities in planning. And then finally, public service delivery, which I think is yeah, it's the area where, where, I guess, planning sits most um, comfortably. Um, the, I think the great challenge around digital public services is you want to start with the customer, you want to meet the customer's needs, so why do you need a national strategy? Because it's all about that, that personal interface. And the approach we've taken to that, really, is to establish a national strategy, the main purpose of which is to work out what are the things you should do once nationally and what are the things that should either happen at sectoral level or in, in, in individual organizations. Um, because I think there's, a, there's always this tension between you know, doing something once efficiently like the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure, and at the other end, actually really trying to open up to innovation and different ways of doing things in order to, in order to change services. Um, and as a result of that approach, in the um, national strategy, we've identified a number of priorities. And I want to talk about one or two of them here, because I think they, they are potentially quite relevant, again, to what you're doing. Um, the first is, is so-called MyGovScot, which is the name we've given to our approach to online services. And really, what MyGovScot is, is two things. One, it's the platform, the place where uh, the public in Scotland will be able to access services, i.e. information and transactions, across all the range of public services whether that be UK, Scottish, or local. It doesn't mean they'll all sit on there, but it means you can get at, you'll be able to get at them in a straightforward way. And that will include, I think, things like e-planning will, you'll be able to get at them through there. But secondly, I think, is to establish um, standards uh, of excellence in the design of services. Um, speaking in um, Glasgow, I can be critical of some of the services where I live, where the level of frustration you may get in trying to get from the beginning to the end of a so-called electronic process is massive. And I think this project is about trying to ensure that across the public sector, we're actually not putting paper-based systems online, but we're actually thinking fundamentally with the user about simpler systems that work online. And that, for me, that's a massive uh, transformation program. And it has to be said that e-planning is, you know, as it were, ahead of the game uh, compared to many in terms of the way it's operating. The second aspect around the user, and I should have said, I, I've got this under the heading of digital first because I think the approach we're trying to take here, rather than the UK um, sort of headline, which is digital by default, uh, we, we're trying to talk about digital first 
because the, what we want to get across is that people will choose digital first because it's the most attractive, straightforward, convenient. You can log on at 11 o'clock at night and do what you have to do when you can actually, when you, when you need to, rather than having to go around to an office, etc. Um, and part of that is we've put a fair amount of work into the whole area of verification and sign-in so that uh, we are about to move to a national approach to uh, identity assurance so that um, using what's already underpins uh, concessionary travel cards for some in the population, uh, we'll have a system where basically uh, you have to prove who you are once and then you should be able to have access using the same credentials to just about any service. Relevant to planning, I think, for individuals on occasion, probably even more re relevant when the, the sort of the business side of that is rolled out. Um, in, and that's something that I think uh, could, you know, is part of an overall approach to simplification for the way we deal with business. So that's digital first. Session, second is using data well. And Ian's already talked about, yeah, I think, the big, the big opportunities. I mean, the new opportunities really are, there are so many different sources of information available and technologies which are relatively easy to use, which allow you to draw the meaning from millions and millions and millions of um, data points. I mean, we, one of the things we did recently was we sort of, we don't believe the, um, the statistics for mobile coverage in Scotland. I mean, anyone who you talk to will say where coverage is bad. And what we used was, it turns out that the ambulance service sends out a signal every, I don't know, every two minutes, a locational signal. Um, so we were able to use that set of data, millions of data points, as a way of actually mapping connectivity quality across Scotland. And that's just one very simple example of the of you know, a lot of data that can be used for a very operational um, requirement. Um, the work we've been doing really comes under the three categories. One is around personal data sharing um, and trying to ensure that the system's linked, but also above all, and we'll come back to this, issues of culture, willingness to share, understanding of the framework within which you're working so that people do actually share when they need to. Um, secondly, around data linkage, where we have vast amounts of data which are okay if you look at the statistics, a set of statistics on its own, you know, employment statistics, benefit statistics, um, yeah, health statistics. But if you can actually link them at the level of the individual, so it, you don't know who the individual is, but you do know that each individual is, um, a, a particular individual is you know, employed in good health, not on benefits or whatever, you massively increase what you know, understand about the, the population. So we're doing a lot of work of, on how do you link different sets of data with, uh, while keeping them anonymous in order that you can use them. And then the third area is open data and big data, better use of public data. The whole open data um, sort of agenda, I think, is relevant to planning. But in some ways, some of the really interesting things here, I think, are some of the, um, the areas of innovation with big data, again, where um, there was the, the Funding Council is, is making a big push around innovation centers, a couple of which are directly relevant here. One is around sensors, and the second is around um, the use of big data. I think one of the critical things here, for me, around the use of big data is the innovation centre is being set up, academia and business, in collaboration with the public sector. And the idea is that they actually take practical projects to look at how data and data technologies can be applied to solve real problems and to you know, create you know, profitable businesses. For the public sector, what really matters here, I think, is that um, they will have a capacity to help you know, civil servants and public servants to actually take problems that we have and put them into a shape that big data and data innovation can help us to solve. And I, I think it's a challenge and an opportunity for us all, including in the planning community, to actually think about what are the problems where 
um, if we use data more effectively, we would actually find better solutions. I think that links very closely to what Ian was saying about the, uh, about the, the opportunities. Um, the other area I want to talk about in terms of the strategy was really around people and very quickly to touch on the fairly evident stuff that you need a digitally confident workforce. And I think there was a question there. Everyone asked themselves the question, yeah, the two sides of the question. One is, do we have a workforce which is digitally confident? And second, are we giving them the tools which allows them to, uh, to make the best of it? And there's, there are, there's work being done in that area, including around apprenticeships, in order to, in order to build that. And alongside that, the, the workforce, um, I think we're conscious at all levels, whether it's the level of the economy, at the level of the public sector, or at the level of Scottish government, that you know, there is a gap between the specialist skills we need and the specialist skills that are currently available. And there is a skills investment plan being developed by um, Skills Development Scotland on the model of the energy plan, which Ian was deeply involved in, in creating, the purpose of which is to try and identify how we fill the gap and to orchestrate the various public agencies to make it happen. Um, that will be really important, I think, in terms of you know, making a reality of, a, of the agenda. And finally, we're putting in place a development program for senior leaders around this. But for me, the important issue here is the broader issue of leadership and culture change. And I know that in e-planning, one of the strands is one of culture change. And um, when we talk about uh, digital changes everything, it seems to me that one of our key roles as leaders uh, in whatever area um, is really to support our teams to actually think differently about the way in which they do their jobs. And I had some quite an interesting conversation uh, about Fife beforehand. Uh, and that can work across different disciplines so that if you're doing things digitally in planning, then that can actually feed across to building standards or whatever. So I think there's a sideways leadership role there as well. I've referred to collaboration and value for money um, largely because uh, of the, the importance of issues around different forms of procurement to support the ways in which we, um, the ways in which we do digital things. Okay, so that's, for me, some of the important national priorities um, which I, I sort of, I think, apply in general, where we are putting in place infrastructure of one sort or another um, to support what happens everywhere. And what I'd like to do really just before I close is maybe to say a bit about um, the area of digital planning. And I, I picked four strands of activity of which I'm aware, which taken together is going to be quite important. Again, the first is a bit different because it's not about you know, improving the way we do planning. It's more about planning improving our levels of connectivity. And that I'm, I know that at various levels, whether it be in the national planning framework where broadband connectivity it has a potentially important sort of overarching sort of place, whether it's around uh, more speedy uh, planning arrangements, including permitted development rights when it comes to mobile phone masts, which are going to be an increasingly important uh, uh, source of access in more remote areas to reasonably high speed when we get 4G. If you get 4G masts out in, um, in, in remote areas, then you're really shifting uh, the quality of connectivity, all the way through potentially, I guess, to be building standards. I think one of the things which um, I was struck by was the that for the first time I th that I've seen, you can now go online when you're moving house and actually check what the quality of connectivity is in the areas you're moving to. And I think that's quite an important thing for obviously new, you know, uh, new build activity. And I think for me there's a question about how that ties in with, with building standards. So that's better connectivity. Both Ian and I have talked a bit about um, you know, better data, bigger data for development planning and the potential of actually drawing on some of the new innovation centers to, to help shape that. Um, 
improving the process with e-planning and building standards, the, I mean, as, from my perspective, looking across the board, e-planning is one of the major success stories because um, it's got a process online, it's got buy-in from everybody across, um, across the public sector, and it means that a large chunk of the process has been, been doing being designed and done once rather than 32 times. I think one of the increasingly important uh, sort of strands of the digital strategy in local government is to try and do things once rather than 32 times when you're talking about business processes which don't really need to change from one area to another. And I know that the next stage of e-planning and building standards is on the, the uh, local authority um, ICT boards, or sort of top half a dozen priorities for uh, development, but but clearly, we're at the stage now of, of moving forward on e-planning and um, and in and bringing building standards within the same uh, picture. And over the next few months, I think the the route to market is going to be developed. I'm going to say more on that, given that we've got the chief planner here, who's the uh, the owner of the the e-planning tool, and. Fourthly, um, and I think really the area where Linknode will be talking later, visualization and building information modeling. Again, Ian's already said a bit about this, but clearly uh, it's hard to see an area where the opportunities of digital technology to give realistic 3D uh, images and the role of that in actually both improving decision making and with building information modeling actually uh, allowing you to um, develop and plan a building over its whole lifestyle more effectively will be really central. If you take all those things together, then it feels like quite a big agenda and quite a large opportunity for planning from my perspective. And you do come back to the leadership challenge of making that happen. And that, I think, is a collective leadership challenge across the whole, um, the whole of Scotland at both political and officer level. And I think where I would like to leave this is to come back to I mean, the core uh, of our overall uh, aim and aspiration is for Scotland to be a world leading digital nation by 2020. I think the question I'd leave you with really is um, what will the planning system in a world leading digital nation look like and how do we get there? Thanks very much.